We've all heard of lo-fi music, so I was wondering, how could I recreate the aesthetic on a modular system? I mean, there has to be some module that makes your music sound like it was low bitrate MP3 played on an out-of-balance record player. Well, I didn't find anything that fit the bill for me, so I decided I'm going to make my own. This module will have several effects that can be routed in any order to achieve the desired aesthetic. Think of it as a lo-fi toolbox. First, add noise. A white noise adding circuit with a VCA control for the amount of noise added, with the ability to act as a standalone white noise source, if that's what you want. Second, sample rate reduction through a sample and hold circuit. This is going to include what I'm going to call a voltage controlled medium frequency oscillator to drive the sample and hold at a useful rate. Third is a circuit to add clicks and pops, like on a dirty or scratch record. The best way to do this is probably with some sort of microprocessor so that it has consistent cadence final effect what I'm going to call wow and flutter. I'm going to use a PT2399 chip to add the effect of an out of balance record player with the sound speeding up and slowing down over time. For added utility and so this can act as a standalone module, I'm going to include two voltage controlled low frequency oscillators to drive the other effects. So let's get started building this thing. I always like cutting the faceplate first so I have something to mount everything to as I build it. I'm using fiberboard for the faceplate I think the aesthetic of the fiberboard matches what I want to go for with this module. That came out pretty good. If you're playing along at home, don't be afraid to turn up the power on your laser when engraving this material. The more the laser scoops out, the darker the lettering will appear. Now let's mount all the knobs and jacks. Because I already figured out how this part of it will work, I'm going to start with the last effect first. That is the wow and flutter. And here's the schematic. I'm not going to go into much detail about how the PT2399 chip works. I just followed the delay schematic from the datasheet, reducing the input signal to appropriate level here and amplifying the output signal back to your rack levels here. The only thing I did different from the datasheet was to add a voltage controlled current source to the VCO pin. This current source changes the frequency of the on-chip oscillator and thereby the length of a delay. Changing the length of delay over time has the effect of compressing and stretching the sound to a degree, and that's the effect we want. The wow and flutter inputs are connected to jacks through 100k potentiometers mounted to the faceplate. The effect can be limited to the desired amount. The flutter input is also AC coupled. Now to build it. This would be a lot of wiring on a perf board, so I thought I would try a different construction technique. Laser engraving a copper clad board and etching it myself. To start, I laid out the components on a single sided PCB, connecting as many traces as I could. Then I exported the image to my laser cutter software. Important to note, you want to mirror the image if you are cutting the underside of the PCB from the top, and set the laser to cut inverted, i.e. leave the dark areas and cut the light areas. I previously coated some single sided copper clad PCB blanks with black spray paint. As you can see the laser removes the paint on a majority of the circuit board just leaving the traces coated. Next is to remove the unwanted copper with ferric chloride. I thought that using my ultrasonic cleaner in this process would speed things up, but 
that was a big mistake. The ultrasonic cleaner is way too aggressive and removed a lot of the paint and destroyed the traces. Fortunately, I'd engraved two boards just in case I made a mistake somewhere along the way. I also removed the tarnish from the copper with acetic acid so that the ferric chloride could do its job faster. Acetic acid is just white vinegar, and if you don't have this, balsamic vinegar is essentially the same thing as far as the copper is concerned. Now with the board etched, the paint protecting the traces can be removed with some paint thinner, and the holes for, for the components can be drilled. I didn't know what size drill bit would work the best for this, so the smallest drill bit I had was one millimeter. A drill bit slightly smaller would have made things easier. Then it's just a matter of dropping in the components onto the board like any other PCB and soldering them in place. I noticed that since there's no solder mask on this PCB, the solder would wick along the traces. This used a lot more solder than I expected. The only thing I had to be mindful of was to complete the few traces that I didn't route on the PCB. There were only four in total, so this wasn't bad. And with all the components placed on the PCB, it's done. Now to mount the PCB to the faceplate. I think just about here will work. I jigged it up to make the soldering easier, and in no time it was done. And get this, it worked the first time I powered it up. I didn't have to change anything. If you have all the tools, etching your own prototype PCBs is definitely the way to go. Now let's see how it sounds. Starting with the percussion rhythm, so the wild flutter will be more evident with the, over the rhythmic sound. Let's add the wow. And now some flutter. And now both. I think we have the start of something here. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part two.